Hi, uh, welcome to a special edition of Gotham Sound TV. Uh, I am here with Ariel Rochelle from RF Explorer. Hi, Ariel. Hi, Peter. Nice to be here. Good. I'm glad you're here. Um, uh, you just happened to be visiting New York, and, and uh, you made the mistake of saying you were in town, and I said, good, come on over to the shop. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, I'm not forgetting it yet. <laughs> all right. Well, there's still time. Uh, <laughs> so um, RF Explorer, for those that don't know, um, is a uh, relatively low-cost, small, portable, handheld, self-powered, uh, uh, spectrum analyzer, and um, Ariel, I can. Is it fair to say you invented this? Well, uh, I think the community invented it, but uh, okay. we were the hands building the product as a you know uh, full feature solution for a number of um, spectrum analyzer needs. Uh, I'm curious. Tell me about community invented it. What do you mean by that? Yeah. So um, the first. The first target for the product was uh, radio control airplane pilots and what some people call drone pilots as well. Mm -hmm. So there are a uh, huge need for understanding what the interference on the field uh, sources, but also collision between transmitters from different pilots. Um, there was no real uh, dependable solution for that. So we came with an idea that was uh, homemade, that worked well for us. Um, I'm personally a, a, a radio control airplane pilot, uh -huh. so I, you know, needed it for my my own, you know, planes. And uh, that become, you know, uh, if you put that, you make it more solid. You can actually put a battery inside. That might mean you, we we don't need an external battery for that. So it was. Um, kind of custom-made solution for a number of people uh, in the same field. And after that, we're, you know, uh, spread boys on this works actually well, this $100 solution for this need. And, you know, that might save a $2,000 plane from crashing. Uh -huh. That makes the whole difference for many guys. So put, we, we put that in RC groups, which is the larger forum, you know, online forum for radio control and prime pilots and become big. And immediately they were asking for different frequencies, covering additional needs, and we were just receptive to that. So um, we, we wouldn't get the credit for producing the full solution for the community. The community itself was prov providing a lot of useful feedback for that. What? Um before that moment, what what were you doing? Is that is are you full time with RF Explorer or? Do you I have would say it? I'm 80 80 percent time in, in RF Explorer. Before that, uh, ninety percent of my time was on the um, financial development business, software development business, uh -huh. and uh, over time was switching, you know, swapping more time off the uh, development, so pure software development, and bringing it into the a hardware software combination that you need for RF Explorer. Yeah. And so uh, initially it was the um, remote control people, the community for remote control. That's right. And I remember um, seeing a model early on, the, the W sub 1G, I think it was called. And 1G, yes. And I remember thinking, ah, this could be used for, for UHF spectrum. Um, I don't remember where I even saw it. I think. Um, I was a fan of Seed. Seed is the company that distributes um, th this product as well as a bunch of other electronics uh, hobby stuff um, and professional stuff. Right. Um, but early on, I remember thinking this could be used for UHF radio mics, and it seemed like around that time a lot of people had that same idea. That's that's right. Uh, the, again, the, the main target at that time was radio control airplanes. Which share many frequencies with, you know, UHF frequencies with you guys, the pro business uh, market area. But uh, we didn't actually know that would service this business because we, we weren't even aware of the white space stuff and all the FCC rules and, you know, problems that we weren't aware of. I think the key for WSU1G product was very low cost, 
mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that uh, I think it's $120. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just one professional showing to another. Uh, typically, they will call us uh, saying, I don't know the model, but some guy was using <laughs> that in a show and I need that because it's very, you know, very uh, useful for what we do. And then eventually some of these guys started asking for a specific features, of course. Yeah. But uh, I would say it was uh, a sur complete surprise for us that this small product would cover your needs so well. It really was perfect timing because it was around the time when um, the we had lost um, 700 megahertz spectrum here and there was all this talk of, of white space devices. Um, and also, it allows things that are normally not able to be seen to become visible. And that's a huge thing to be able to have within our grasp. And this touches on, we were starting to have this conversation a little bit off camera, but um, it touches on this idea that, you know, a spectrum analyzer um, before RF Explorer came along um, was measured in thousands of dollars. You know, sort of started in at with two thousand and could easily go up to sixty, seventy thousand dollars, depending right. on options. And RF Explorer came along, and you know, it's it's quite literally a fraction of that. That's uh, right. I think, as you are probably aware, um, RF Explorer has a subset of features of some of these, you know, big brothers of twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars that might provide you a uh, 0 0.01 dB uh, resolution or uh, sub, sub hertz configuration for star stop frequencies. But for many needs, you don't really need, you, you don't really can make any use of that. If, if you are um, using an antenna to detect broadcast interferences, you have way more uncertainty that the resolution of the device will provide you. Right. In other words, having a 20,000 or a 200 device might make no big difference for what you need in certain scenarios. Right. I think for most of our customers, for example, they don't need to see into the noise floor of the RF um, right. environment. They just need to know, is it relatively clean or is it relatively occupied? And Exactly. And th I think that's the key. And, and some other uh, technicians call us uh, many times with the feedback of, you know, we have one of these two $20,000 devices and it's always a nightmare to get the authorization to bring it to a show or to right. carry on for, you know, some large trip. And when you are there, you are very worried that might, you know, go away or be broken. Mm -hmm. um, you need insurance to carry it on. Yeah, and making sure it stays calibrated. and Right, all so all, all that stuff, uh, is kind of bureaucracy and it prevents the technician to do its job. Mm -hmm. With RF Explorer, these companies have 10 or 20 devices that use as needed. There's no a really big deal if you get it broken or, um, you know, you lost one. They're still a fraction of the cost of insuring one of these large devices. And that gives you pretty much freedom to go to any show anytime bring it out of your pocket and see what's the spectrum activity at that time. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I think um, RF Explorer probably came at the right time for your business area, the, the audio pro and white space problem, but also open opportunities to people who didn't actually know what scanning a spectrum was, because again, the solutions were too expensive and that why the, the spectrum of customers to students, um, uh, professionals that want to communicate radio links of any kind, detecting cell phone activity, sure. uh, people also interested on um, uh, pollution, you know, that might bring mm -hmm. even health problems. Uh, we are not expert on every market that Earth Explorer is being used, uh, but uh, we try to adapt again, as a community produced or adapted product, try to bring all the capabilities to the product on any new version that can cover better your actual needs. And so 
you have a tremendous amount of success. Um, can you share with us a, a roadmap of what, what's, what might be next for you for RF Explorer? Uh, yes, I think um, over, over the years we saw um, that concentrating on a subset of the models um, adding more capabilities to each one of them uh, is kind of better solution or is, is closer to a sweet spot than having that many different models that we carry on so far. Mm -hmm. So probably in a, num in a number of ways we'll be adding more powerful models that concentrate features, for instance, from WSU1G, but also uh, can scan 6 GHz, but my provide some of the features that you need a software or a Mac connected today, maybe inside the device uh, at some point. Good. So there might be features like uh, very basic frequency coordination that might be uh, resolved by the product itself. Within the device? Within the device. That's fantastic. They are, they are expected to um, have uh, models with larger, significantly larger screen. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, additional filtering that uh, sometimes uh, when you're in a show or in some particular applications, uh, an out-of-band inter interference might actually um, remove significant sensitivity of the device. Sure. So if you need to, let's say, scan UHF only, but there's a microwave oven nearby, mm -hmm. you may be actually damaging the sensitivity on the UHS band. So having some of these common use filters for some markets might make all the difference rather than having to bring one and plug it into the antenna every time. Right. So I think we probably see a number of more powerful models in the future and, and probably less um, number of total models uh, in the sense that you wouldn't probably need that much different models because the three or four uh, that are concentrated on the capabilities will offer all you need for the different markets. That's great. And you think in, uh, two years, three years down the road? Is this uh, I think uh, this year you will see more uh, powerful model models. Uh, in fact, Hanvention is a large uh, exhibit in Ohio mm -hmm. uh, in late May. We will introduce the WSU-1G Plus, which starts at 50 kilohertz rather than 240 megahertz, which is important for the ham community. They work at very low frequencies. And, and us too, uh, it's, I've always wanted to be able to scan into 216 megahertz, for example. I see. For, right. uh, you know, it's assistive listening, but um, we use it for queuing wireless I queuing. See. Yeah. I see, as a feedback. Yeah, and also VHF is now, um, you know, for us an option. So it's another band yeah. that you use. So that'll be great. And also RF, RF ID is big at mm, three megahertz and some very low frequencies we don't currently cover. So that will be this year. And probably this year also we'll have uh, some model that will cover the full band from 50 kilohertz to six gigahertz. We have some gaps in the middle right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, the 6G combo, for instance, has some gap between 2.7 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. That is not one of the most popular bands, but it's still on some use. Yes. Yeah. And eventually, two years, we expect to have a larger screen, more capable model that should probably, at some higher price tag, will cover all the needs for the pro business. Uh, fantastic. That's, that's Thank good you. to hear. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. What, um, what sort of, uh, have you always been involved in electronics? Have you always, I mean, you said you were a software I mean, guy, but, um, yes. Um, actually, you know, I think it's something that, uh, came subconsciously, uh, this, uh, RS Explorer need, uh, before we were talking about, a tremendous opportunity in the electronic business yeah. uh, where you can start by a few bucks doing something as a prototype and then growing it to a full product if you see the market or the real opportunity. Um, I remember being in college, I did telecom telecommunications mm -hmm. uh, engineering and I've been in college uh, looking at those expensive 
spectrum analyzers, uh, radio generators, and signal analyzers, that you weren't able to even touch them for most of the time. They were very restricted access devices. And it's still surprising how, how an engineer might have so limited access to real instruments you need to do your job eventually as a professional. So I remember at that time, um, some years ago, uh, discussing about this, you know, being a real problem for the professionals that probably is not too different to 30 years ago with computers. Mm -hmm. uh, software engineer would have very limited access to real computers. Right. We are hopefully, you know, happily not no longer in those days, but for radio and radio frequency, there's still that big problem on universities, colleges, even um, technical shops that they are very limited access to expensive instruments. So, mm, you know, starting at that time, we always thought there, there should be a better solution for that. Mm -hmm. So we expect to cover education and engineering as a uh, hobbyist or even professional starting on um, radio frequency engineering using our products as the first, you know, device you probably need to do any kind of tutorial practice or bring in small products to market. Uh, in, with that in mind, yes, I'm always been a electrical engineer in my uh, kind of in, in my wish to have some product that could cover all those needs. Mm -hmm. But for um, business reason, I was always driving my career towards the software area. But my actual interest, my passion is on electronics. It's, yeah. Well, I'm glad you were able to combine it. Yeah, eventually I was able to do that. But uh, software is still a key part of RF Explorer. Sure. Um, having the hardware part working alone is typically not good enough for covering the needs of our customers. Mm -hmm. When you need to export these scans to sure software, for instance, you need comma delimited files being exported in different regions of the world. All that kind of stuff really needs to be connected to a computer. Yes. And uh, I, I saw many cases, people who are very proficient with electronics that are kind of not so interested in the software part. And I think we need a balance of both. So we have kind of uh, put probably 50, 50% 50 of our time on each side. And that's kind of a uh, key success part of RF Explorer, we are able to support many different computer technologies, uh, accept requests from customers mm -hmm. about needs. What's what's the um, the most outlandish use of, of an RF Explorer that you've heard of? Like the, the one that you least expected? Well, there have been a few. I mean, even the white space audio was mm -hmm. a surprise for us, but uh -huh. it's so common that uh, no longer came as a surprise. Um, I think probably something that uh, was shocking to us was um, people who use that for um, scanning who might be using illegal uh, cable television or kind of uh, rebroadcast uh -huh. stuff, but not from uh, actual companies, but people who um, try to find out if something is, you know, picking up your signal for un un unreportedly, and they actually order one Earth Explorer just for that. <laughs> and they could actually prove that was the case. <laughs> wow. So uh, this kind of guys probably has a previous knowledge of how an, an spectral analyzer works, but still is a surprising fact that you order a device just for yeah. A particular, probably one-time use. <laughs> well, it sort of speaks to um, you know, it's it's amazing the price point that you're able to to make right. these at. Yeah. Probably that that's part of the you know way you might get these devices. Also, remember some several customers even providing YouTube videos uh, capturing the uh, RF activity of these. Um, uh, electric counters or water or gas counters that companies put in your in your house. Uh -huh. Apparently, the official 
company says that it might broadcast once a week or on very specific information, some customers could prove that that's pretty much broadcasting every day, uh -huh. several times a day. Yeah. And many customers are concerned there's no information about how much you, you know, gas has been used, but that might also be used by third parties to know if you are at home or not, or sure. what are you, the times of the day you are busier. Uh, the fact that you can use a simple uh, spectrum analyzer to prove how these companies are using your data mm -hmm. is also very powerful, very democratic, I would say. That I would agree with that. I think uh, security of the Internet of Things is, some, is like a whole other topic entirely um, we we should we should wrap it up is there anything you you wanted to uh, tell our customers anything you wanted to add no I, I would just thank the community for being so useful for bringing this product to the market uh, in all the features that over time has been able to capture and service and we just expect you know thanks to shops like yours with the right knowledge and the right service to keep offering uh, what our customers need Excellent. Thank you, Peter. Thank you.